What's up, YouTube? Today I want to talk about prospecting in old players and why I believe this is actually a very good strategy if you are trying to enter the soccer card market right now. But before I go into that, let me say one thing. If you can give a like to this video, I will be very thankful for that. Apart from that, a lot of viewers are not even subscribers. You can change that. And if you are subscribing to my channel, thank you so much for that. Let's go into the disclaimer, it will be a short one, but a very important one. No financial advice, no one can predict the market. On the description you can find a eBay affiliate link that supports the channel, same for Patreon, so thank you so much for all the support. Any card I will show on this video or any video I can eventually be buying or selling. In, in the last, but also quite important, English is not my main language, any types of mispronunciations I'm sorry for that. So, prospecting. Well, prospecting is fun, and I think most of you guys will agree with me. Uh, when we start talking about prospecting, most people uh, think about players like Alanda, Sufati, Pedri, etc. Uh, Ultra Modern is the most popular era in the soccer card market, and actually is easy to understand. Um, I'm saying in the soccer card market, but you can apply the same logic in other sports. Even, for example, in Pokemon. Uh, new products they tend to be quite popular and again it's very easy to understand and i will go in, into that so for example in soccer people love to find the next big thing the next big card the next Lionel messi the get rich quick mentality is something very common in sports cards and i don't think this is a bad thing to be fair because most people tend to enter this way the market and uh, the reality is if you don't count the last two years they end up losing money and they start to understand that going for cards with uh, more uh, rarity most of, or at least organic rarity and apart from that players that are already uh, solid in the market that they that, that players that are already i would not say only goods but legendary players on the markets and they understand that very quickly some people never learn to be fair but uh, a lot of people end up learning this way i have a lot of viewers that uh, they they tend to tell me look i end up uh, before knowing your channel i was buying a lot of ultra modern right now i'm way more into vintage and pre-modern and uh, my results are uh, are showing uh, very good signs so Again, no financial advice, of course, but you guys get the point. Also, the entry point and the learning curve uh, can be smaller and the payoff huge. Big risk, big reward. So, when you enter the market, look, if you want to invest in vintage, knowing all the releases in uh, in France, in Spain, in Brazil, for certain players, is actually quite difficult. Apart from that, that information is not very available. In pre-modern, I would say a little bit more, but the learning curve is actually quite 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 big and the entry point tends to sh to seem quite cheap look uh, if you enter the market right now and i tell you you know what just invest in pele rookies because those uh, tend to be a little bit safer than normal i know this is extreme example of course but you can tell me look i i agree with you that pele could be a solid buy right now but if i want to buy a psa one pele a leaf a bolo get i need to have 20 to 30k and i don't have that type of money so that automatic makes uh, most of those uh, guys entering the market right now believe that um, the opportunity on vintage the opportunity on pre-modern is already not there anymore but if they can find a new kid like Ansu Fati and if Ansu Fati becomes one of the best players ever uh, for Barcelona they can see uh, a lot of opportunity basic with that type of idea of course this is big risk uh, but again big reward you could argue that buying cards no matter the era by the way and I, i'm putting vintage pre-modern into this is a gambling okay and uh, there is solid arguments on that front cards they are worth what people think they are worth basically is what the market tends to say there is no intrinsic value on that front so uh, to some extent you can actually make a solid argument that cards are gambling in the end but when it comes to ultra modern this argument gains a lot of strength okay so uh, look uh, if you compare again let's go with Ansu Fati but I could put another kid to be fair Ansu Fati versus Pelé of course we are talking about two different type of players of course we are talking about two different uh, type of risks to, to some extent the the argument that a ultra modern collector in 
investor can say is, yes, but uh, the Pelé market will grow slowly and the Ansu Fati market can actually explode. And there is some truth on that front. So uh, that's why I'm saying the arguments of gambling gets a little bit uh, stronger when you start talking uh, about ultra modern. And to understand the psychology around this, uh, look, when you gamble, you your brain releases dopamine, the feel-good neurotransmitter that makes you feel excited. This is super easy to, to understand. Uh, and to be clear, uh, because I don't want to go very long on this front, since I'm just presenting you why prospecting is so fun, but to be clear, I have nothing against collectors who only buy ultra modern. If you understand the risk, I don't see anything wrong. Do I think we'll be very successful in the long run? I tend to doubt, but I don't see anything wrong as long you are aware uh, of that. And uh, one thing that I, I actually want to, to add to this um, to this topic is this. Look, when you start talking about ultra modern, there will always be narratives that will say, look, I bought a land for $10, now I end up selling for $10K. There will, there will always be outliers, that there will always be Uh, people in the market that end up prospecting and end up getting lucky, okay? Because you need to get lucky. Of course, there is some skill uh, knowing uh, what player will be the next big thing or not. But also think about this. Uh, clubs, they, they spend crazy amounts of money in scouting and they fail all the time. So imagine you, uh, you know what I mean? Look, if those big clubs, they fail all the time, imagine me, a random guy on internet, trying to find the next uh, Lionel Messi. There is a likely scenario I will fail. But like I said, there is always outliers and those are, those outliers will give hope for uh, um, ultra-modern investors. Uh, think about lottery. Of course, when you buy a lottery ticket, uh, the likely scenario is that most likely you will lose the money you spend on the lo the lottery but uh, there will always be the narrative that a guy that uh, one of your friends knew that the, or a friend that your friend and your friend knew end up buying a lottery ticket and end up winning and uh, that will keep alive uh, that market forever if you ask me so and uh, even again i said this a lot of times but to finish this thought i also have some cards for new kids like alan pedri etc it's fun like I said, and I understand those cards. There is Alanda would say is in is in a different level already. But let's say a player like Peter and Sufati, I'm aware that I can lose most of my money or all my money on those cards. So I believe you can prospect in a more safe way. And I'm putting safe, look, safe in cards. I don't like that term at all uh, because cards are uh, not a, a liquid asset. In the end, uh, are a super speculative asset. And uh, apart from that, there is no intrinsic value. I know people get mad when I start talking about this. And let me say one thing. I'm very bullish in the soccer card market, but we need to understand Cards are not stocks. They are quite far from that. Some people say, yeah, but I am getting better results on that. Amazing, but understand uh, the risk. So, Ronaldo and Messi are good. No doubt about that. Most of you guys will, will agree with that. But a lot of players from that uh, from their era are also crucial players for the history of soccer. A lot of people, they go from only goats to try to find the new goat, to try to find the baby goat. So, uh, this, I, I already did this example with Pelé, but uh, again, let's let's go again with, with a more uh, pre-modern example. People enter the market, they try to buy Cristiano Ronaldo rookie, too expensive. Well, uh, Messi, again, Mega Cracks, too expensive. What sh should I do now? Should I look into players like, again, Thomas Muller, Benzema, that are actually amazing players, maybe not good level, but legendary players? No, they don't think that way. They actually think about uh, uh, trying to find the next Lionel Messi. Uh, let's buy a Musiala rookie. Let's buy a Bellingham rookie because those guys will be the next Ballon d'Or winners. And I think this is a big mistake. I and let's refocus. I personally believe this is a mistake. And if the market is bearish on that front, makes me believe that I can find a lot of opportunity. You guys know uh, when the market is very bearish in, in certain players, uh, if I, I can see strong fundamentals on, on players like Muller, uh, Benzema. I'm, I'm showing those two examples because I actually did... Uh, um For both players uh, investing in greatness, Benzema is not is not out yet, but will be very soon. And I end up realizing, not that I did not know, but I end up realizing how close those players are 
to to break some records to 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 even win more things basically so i can find a lot of opportunity on that front a couple of good examples like i said is benzema and thomas muller both historical players for their clubs for me top 10 uh, top 15 uh, it depends is, is relative of course in the last 15 years um look let's talk about benzema for example he's one of the best players ever for real madrid there is no way around that uh, this guy is, is crushing uh, this season is look when you look at these numbers they are super impressive thomas muller for me one of the best players ever for for germany not only for Bayern munich and for me those players are historic if you disagree with me look that's totally fine maybe you think uh, i don't agree with you on thomas muller but i agree with you on Benzema, or i don't agree with you in in any of those but for example i agree if you talk about luis suarez which is another good example so in the end you do your research i'm just searching with i'm just I'm just sharing with you my strategy, okay? So this uh, goes back to something I talk a lot that is an explored market. So if I believe the Cristiano Ronaldo market and the Messi market is already very explored, I still see a lot of potential, by the way, but it's already very explored. Uh, markets like, uh, when I say markets, I'm saying niche markets like uh, Benzema, Thomas Muller, I, I, I see a lot of opportunity personally. So um, before I go into an example, uh, in, the, in this case, two examples, let me say one thing uh, the Q&A number 32 is live on Patreon by the way if you guys are not members of Patreon you guys are missing a lot of content but again that's up to you you do your own choices joining the Patreon is around ten dollars uh, a little bit more a little bit less I guess it depends on the country um, and uh, look in the last couple of months I end up answering more than 200 questions so if you like my videos on YouTube there is a likely scenario you like my videos on Patreon and I can I share a lot of content there and I will share even more content going forward so we are already more than 70 uh, members which is quite crazy for such a small channel like like mine but the next stop is at 100 and i will get that uh, soon at least i hope so check the links on the description to to join my my my, my patreon again you don't you don't need to do it there, there will always be free content on youtube but if you want to to learn more uh, about the pre-modern market the soccer card market i think it's a nice place to to, to be in again I was saying ten dollars for the Patreon, but one thing is free is Discord. So we are more than, we are already more than four hundred members, which is quite crazy to think about. I believe I created Discord three four months ago, so four hundred members is a super impressive number, and we are growing almost. Uh, uh, we are growing in a crazy crazy pace. So um, I'm very very optimistic about the future of of our Discord community, and it's an amazing place to learn about soccer, like I said, and to talk with me if you, because I, I'm online a lot of times there so inv invite link below the video in this case on the description check both links and i see you guys there so Lewandowski, Benzema examples. Look, um, uh, let, let's start with Lewandowski because I think Lewandowski and Benzema are similar, but they are different uh, in terms of prices. So Lewandowski, best player in the world in 2020. Some people believe he should have won this year, but again, different story for another day. One Champions League, nine times Bundesliga, and more are coming. When I say more are coming, I'm talking about, about more trophies, about more awards. Uh, Lev is a special case since his market is is exp since his market exploded in the last year uh, one or two years ago that's why i'm saying that they are, they are a little bit different level was selling quite cheap uh, i remember buying uh, in mint condition i would say not even two years ago but uh, in mint condition Lewandowski rookies for uh, less than 100 dollars which again when you compare with prices right now those are crazy times but even at the time Lewandowski was already one of the best ever uh, the narrative was not that strong the narrative and the changing on Lewandowski when Lewandowski starts entering the Ballon d'Or con, uh, conversation basically but when I was buying uh, rookies for Lewandowski even if, if Lewandowski was not in that level yet but the conversation was going around already so you can see there is some type of delay on the market uh, my my take on this is a lot of Americans they do not understand soccer again I know some people feel offended by this but if you are very engaged with the soccer card market it, um, or not the soccer card market I'm sorry with the soccer world you can see those narratives getting stronger and uh, with some type of delay they will eventually eat the soccer card market Market. so predicting narratives and by the way i know a lot about soccer i watch soccer uh, again almost daily so that's why i'm very engaged uh, on that front 
predicting narratives is difficult, but looking at greatness, looking at uh, the potential of, of the player becoming an all-time great, I actually believe is quite easier, uh, or at least is easier than predicting narratives. Lewandowski is one of the best players ever in Bundesliga. No doubt about that. There is no argument that you can make against that. If you don't count Ronald Messi, no one have numbers like Lewandowski, for example, in, in the last, uh, almost in history, to, to, to be fair. Um, but in the primordial modern world, uh, for sure, this guy is a special talent. Uh, now let's take a look at Benzema, and I believe the case is, is a little bit different. Look, four Champions League, three times La Liga, one Nation Leagues, and more are coming, similar to Lewandowski. Benzema, in the other hand, is still quite cheap. Again, no financial advice. If you don't believe in, love, in the Benzema, completely ignore or skip this part. It's up to you. I see a lot of uh, I see a lot of times these rookies, uh, the Panini foot. I know that there is a Delcife card. That, uh, by the way, I will make a video on investing in greatness on Benzema, and I will talk uh, about Delcife more on that video. But let's say the, the Panini foot uh, rookie, which is the main rookie. Uh, goes for less than $100 in raw condition, in this case near mint to mint condition, um, which I, I tend to think seems quite cheap, remembers me Benzema, uh, Lewandowski quite a lot two, two, two years ago. Like, uh, Lewandowski, uh, like Lewandowski, a player with an amazing career already, but very far from then. In my view, an explored market for one of the best players ever for Real Madrid. So, both are ready to break multiple records or consolidate their position in crucial lists in crucial stats. History will be very kind for those two players if I had to guess. Again, can I predict that for sure? No, but looking at, it, at numbers for Benzema and Lewandowski and seeing that they are still playing at, uh, at uh, amazing level, you can make an argument playing in their prime, especially uh, those two guys, I can see history being very kind in the future. So let's take a look at Lewandowski and this is a good example of why I like to speculate or prospecting or whatever and call it on a player Lewandowski, like Lewandowski, even if this player is, is already old. Again, uh, I believe he's 32 or 33 years old, something like that. But you guys get the point. For the market, for the ultra modern uh, in speculators, investors, this is a player that they stay away. So he's an all time leader uh, goals. Uh, all, he's not all, I'm sorry, all time leader goals in Bundesliga. He's at number two. Uh, but you guys can see that he is the. Again, uh, still far from Jared Muller, but don't you guys think scoring more than 100 goals on, on uh, Bundesliga is very likely for Lewandowski at this point? I mean, the man seems like playing at his prime right now, and you can imagine it, you, at least, again, this is speculating, this is prospecting almost, like I was saying. But uh, you understand that uh, if he plays two, three seasons at a similar level, this record will 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 get uh, break quite easily actually and uh, if i had to predict again i would say robert Lewandowski will be the all-time leader um, in terms of goals uh, f ever for bundesliga and that's something look does not matter what people tend to tell you when people look at history looking at history of bundesliga there is no way around that that uh, you will not see this name roberto Lewandowski. and uh, but and this is this is very important to say. Even if I'm wrong, and there is a likely scenario on that front, who knows? Maybe Lewandowski goes to, to another club, to, to, to another league. Maybe Lewandowski actually end up uh, going in a crazy downtrend. I don't think that will be the likely scenario. In, in, in uh, I don't think I think Lewandowski will finish his career at Bayern Munich, by the way. But I don't think those will be the scenario. But th that scenario is possible, of course. But if that scenario ends up occurring, even if Lewandowski stays at number two all-time leader goals in Bundesliga, I still believe that's super impressive already. Look, Gerd Müller is one of the best players ever. If Lewandowski is number two on that list, I, I, there is no shame into that. But I actually believe Lewandowski will be number one. I'm not saying Lewandowski is better or than uh, Gerd Müller. I'm not comparing those two guys right now. What I'm saying is, in terms of stats, Lewandowski is an impressive player. And look, um, this one, again, I believe will be the number one. Top international men's football goal scorers by country. As you can see, Lewandowski is, is at the bottom of, of the list, and number 13, with 74 goals. But what's crazy about that? Guys, look, the number four... Uh, in this case, Puskas, another legendary player, is only 10 goals away. Like I said, Lewandowski is playing at, at a crazy level right now. Don't you guys think it's possible that Lewandowski can, uh, can go to number 5, number 4? I believe that's possible. So, uh, and again, 
being top five, I don't think he'll break uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, of course. But again, Cristiano Ronaldo, completely different beast. But uh, if you like, if if you take a look at uh, being top five, don't you think that's impressive? I mean, at least I think. Maybe you guys disagree. Maybe you guys think I'm crazy. But I think those are stats that people will take a look and look. Look at this list. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, okay, those two, again, but the, the difference between uh, Ali um, Daye is, look, he's great with, with uh, Iran, but mm, apart from that, there is nothing, okay? But when you take a look at Puskas, uh, Messi, Messi, again, uh, is not even a good example because Messi is Messi, but you, you understand that if those those players end up uh, um, becoming, if, if I'm sorry, if Lewandowski end up becoming top five with uh, with this stat and more stat that, that, that I will show you right now, uh, there, there will be a narrative that Lewandowski is a all-time great, which I believe, by the way. So, take a look at top goal scorer ever for Champions League, the, bis- the biggest competition in the world, if you don't count World Cup. Look, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo again. I mean, it's so weird to see Cristiano Ronaldo <laughs> at the top of everything with Lionel Messi. Cristiano Ronaldo, different beast. Lionel Messi, different beast. But look about those two guys that I was talking at number three and number four. Roberto Lewandowski and Karim Benzema. What do you guys think is impressive to be top five in top goal scorer ever for Champions League? I mean, people will look at those type of leads. Top goal scorer ever. Let's see. Lewandowski at the bottom of the table. But guys, Again, don't you guys think Lewandowski can score, I would say, at least 100 goals more? I think that's a very likely scenario. And the, and, and if that's the case, he goes into top 10 uh, automatic. And uh, top 10, top goal scorer ever. I mean, look at the list. Cristiano Ronaldo, Pelé, Lionel Messi, Romário, Puskas, Bican, Gerd Muller, Eusébio. Roberto Lewandowski will enter that list eventually, or at least I believe will be the case. That's why I'm saying I'm prospecting almost, I'm speculating on his career. And uh, apart from that, look, um, if you guys uh, want to, to, to speculate even in the short term, what are the favorites to, to win uh, Champions League right now? I would say Bayern Munich is one of the favorites. You can tell me Manchester City, PSG, of course, but there is a likely scenario also that will be Bayern Munich. What are the favorites to win Bundesliga again? Bayern Munich. What will be one of the favorites to win Ballon d'Or next year? I would say Lewandowski, still playing at the all-time high. Can I predict for sure that Lewandowski will, will win any of those three trophies? No, of course. But can I see him win at least Bundesliga? I think that that will be a given. But there is a likely scenario. He, he can compete for Champions League or, or, or for Ballon d'Or. I think there is that scenario on that front. And Benzema is very similar. So look, Benzema, for example. By the way, I, I did not end up sharing this, but Lewandowski is, is the all-time uh, leader for Poland in terms of goals. But again, I think that's quite logic. So uh, France all-time goal scorers. Um, let me take a look at one thing. Okay, France all-time goal scorers. As you can see, Benzema is at number five uh, with 36 goals. By the, by the way, Benzema ended up not playing for a very long time with France for, for a lot of controversy. Not going into that right now. 36 goals. But don't you guys think if Benzema keeps going to, to France, and I believe that will be the case at, at this point, that he can, he can score at least 10 more goals? I believe that will be the case, that will put him at number two with, with, with Giroud. But what about if he scores more? Uh, you can see that those narratives can, can be quite interesting. You can say, yeah, but the Griezmann will keep scoring also. Again, but you guys understand the point. There is potential on uh, on Benzema. Look, do I think Benzema will, will surpass Thierry Henry? I don't think so, but I also don't think it's impossible, to be fair. And the same logic applies to Antoine Griezmann. Champions League all-time top goal scorers, like I said. Karim Benzema at number four. And I guess the competition between Lewandowski and, and Benzema will be strong because both are playing at insane, insane high level right now. But look at this. Real Madrid all-time top goal scorers. Benzema at number four with... Um, but look, he needs what? He needs around 20 goals to go to to, to number two spot and and uh, and go and um, and being only below Cristiano Ronaldo. Don't you guys think that's impressive? I mean, we are talking about the biggest club in the world. If a player like Karim Benzema becomes the the number two uh, in the list of all-time goal scorers. For me, that's super impressive, by the way. Uh, and in this case, uh, is something that favors uh, Benzema. France is one of the favorites to win World Cup. 
Do I think France will win the World Cup for sure? No, I think that's very difficult to predict, like I said. But there is a scenario France uh, can win the World Cup and this man end up, end up uh, having his career with the with, uh, with World Cup. Champions League, again, I believe Bayern Munich is, is, is a better team than Real Madrid, by the way. But there is a likely scenario that Real Madrid can win also. La Liga, I think it's similar to Lewandowski. At this point, it seems like Real Madrid is, is, is a clear favor to win La, La Liga. So, again... You can see that... Uh, I, can I be wrong in a lot of those things? Of course. But that's why I, I want to make this clear. Look, even if Benzema wins World Cup or Leva wins Ballon d'Or, I don't think they will give you the same return as a new kid that eventually explodes in the scene. Let's say Musiala f now starts playing at a crazy level, breaking records at his age. People will love uh, Musiala because he's a new kid, that there is a lot of fears in front of him and his prices will go to the moon, like people tend to say. We saw that with Aland. Um, so I don't think even if Lewandowski ends up winning Ballon d'Or, or, or, or another Champions League and breaking all the records I, I end up sharing with you, that Lewandowski will uh, give you a 10x. I don't think that will be the case. But I can see a, a very good growth on that front. Um, and look, I can see a lot of narratives change on players like Mezema, Muller, Suarez, Lewandowski, etc. And even if the records I predict end up failing, you are still holding a legendary player. So that's the good part. But... If I am correct and Leva breaks wins more records slash trophies, I can see a huge increase. Again, maybe not a 10x, but I don't think a 2x, 3x is impossible. And that's a crazy return. And apart from that, for me personally, the upside seems very worth it. Okay, um, look. Let, let's go back a little bit because, again, like I said, Lewandowski is a different case than Benzema, Thomas Muller, Suarez. Because prices for Lewandowski, I would say, there is already a price in effect. Uh, that means I still think Lewandowski is crazy underrated because I think Lewandowski is, is top three uh, in, in this generation. But that being said, okay, um, I think the risk, uh, I risk a reward on, on, on new rookies. Look, it's something that maybe is worth it for you. I think in this case, there is risk, uh, because look, we are still talking about cards, but I think the downside is not that bad. And I think the upside can actually be also amazing. That's why I'm saying this, this for me seems like, again, almost the the sweet spot, if you know what I mean. Because look, if I, if I buy um, a Benzema rookie, for example, for $100, do you guys think I can lose money in the long run? Well, the answer is yes. But... But you, do you guys understand why I'm saying this, this is a, a sweet spot almost? Of course I can lose money because every card can, can go down. The market can crash. And if that's the case, no matter what you choose in the end, you are, uh, you are losing money. But, but you guys get the point, right? Yeah, but there is also an amazing upside for that card. And the downside, even if it's there, uh, when you compare with Ultramodern, it's almost irrelevant, okay? So... And to finish this, do your own research. I'm talking about Benzema because he's a player I like a lot. I'm talking about Thomas Muller because he's a player I, I like a lot. But look, Sergio Ramos is another great example. Suarez is another great example. Buffon is another great example. Manuel Neuer is another great example. And uh, look at, 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 their, at their cards, at their stickers. For example, I have on the screen the one of... Um, the rook is for Thomas Muller, but this sticker is actually very common, so I don't even think this sticker is a good buy. For example, for Luis Suarez, I, I, in this case, I believe this sticker tends to be way more difficult to find than this Thomas Muller rookie. So, uh, no, not Thomas Muller, uh, Manuel Neuer rookie. So, you can see, with that in mind, maybe investing in Suarez could be better than investing in Manuel Neuer, but Manuel, Manuel Neuer also have other rookies that are more scarce than this one. So do your own research. My, my, my idea with this video is not telling you to buy uh, Benzema or Lewandowski. I just believe there is a lot of potential on that. But look, maybe you don't believe this is the rookie. Maybe you believe it's the headshot. Maybe you don't believe this is the rookie. Maybe you believe it's the LCCP for, for Benzema. All of those things, 
you do your own research. What I'm sharing with you is something that I love to do on the market that is almost prospecting in old players that look, their career is already amazing and they are still playing at an amazing level and uh, amazing level, I'm sorry, and I can see a lot of upside if they, they, they keep winning and look, think about this. When you are investing in a player like Alan, and I know Alan is an amazing player, he's playing at Borussia Dortmund, okay? So there is a likely scenario he will end up winning zero trophies at, at, at the end of the season or not relevant trophies if you are investing in a player like uh, um, Thomas Muller that is playing at Bayern Munich you can see there is a big big difference Bayern Munich probably will win Bundesliga and is one of the favorites to win Champions League and uh, no matter tr uh, the trophy that uh, um, a player like Thomas Muller uh, a play um, I'm, I'm sorry no matter the, 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 the competition a club like Bayern Munich competes they will always be one of the favorites apart from that Thomas Muller plays for Germany another strong contender for Euro Cup World Cup etc so Think about this. I think this is a nice uh, way to approach the market. Again, no financial advice is something that I love to do. I'm, I'm sharing with you uh, examples of, of pre-modern because those guys are playing, but you can actually apply this logic to be fair even on, on vintage player or pre-modern legends that are already done. In the sense that, look, um, some players, they seem super an explorer. I'm talking about, in this case, talking about more players that I believe they can still win things. But look, if, if you look at Luis Figo, for example, um, if you look even at this Stefan, those players, they seem quite undervalued, knowing how great they, they end up being for their countries, for their clubs. So something to think about. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, collect things you love. Price, price is what you pay. Value is what you get. Have a nice day. Leave a like. Check the Patreon. Check the Discord. And yeah, have a nice day. Bye.